news of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crown Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. And they're, they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Tonight, more than 180 new cases reported in a small Georgia county since yesterday. Why leaders are now calling this a super spreader case. Plus, who should be wearing a mask and who should not? NBC medical correspondent Dr. John Torres weighs in on the never-ending debate. But first, the number of deaths from coronavirus in the United States now exceeding the number of people who died in the terrorist attacks on September 11th. As of today, this afternoon, the U.S. death toll has now climbed past 3,600 people, eclipsing the official count in China where the outbreak began. China has 1.3 billion people. The United States has 327 million. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeff Hollinger, working in town, and we are glad to be with you this evening. And I'm Jennifer Bellamy in our studio in Midtown. Dr. Toomey with the State Department of Public Health warned that we would start to see sharp increases in the number of cases as they process more tests, and we are certainly seeing that today with a thousand more confirmed cases since this time last night. 125 people in Georgia have now died from the virus. The pandemic has also left thousands of Georgians without jobs, making the process to file for unemployment. Unfortunately, one of those popular stories on 11alive.com. But now many people say the process is taking too long. 11 Alive's Shalou Her took to those concerns to the state's Department of Labor. Many Georgians looking for answers about the filing process. The Georgia Department of Labor says it processed about 12,000 unemployment claims as of last week. Before this pandemic, the DOL processed only about 5,000 per week. By next week, the DOL says those numbers could be astronomical. The Department of Labor is trying to keep things efficient, running smooth. 11 Alive's financial expert Andrew Pulo says the department is doing the best it can to handle all of the claims. And with each individual claim filed, it could take at least two weeks to process. We'll just be patient. They're working very hard, obviously, trying to make things happen for everyone. But just like anyone else, we're all overloaded right now, mm -hmm. trying to uh, help everyone. So. The DOL tells 11 Alive it's working every day to improve the system. If possible, it recommends people have their employers file a claim on their behalf if they're only out of work temporarily. Those claims can be automated. And they've asked all employers to file on behalf of their employees. Uh, you got to get a little bit of time. They're working uh, around the clock to make it work, but we're starting to see unemployment claims being paid. The best resource right now for people with questions is the Department of Labor website with specific pages set up for those affected by COVID-19. The DOL says on an average week, the site gets about 55,000 visitors. Last week, it got more than 100,000 hits in one day. 
Tonight, a stay at home order remains in place for the city of Atlanta, but some council members are calling on the mayor to go even further and shut down the Beltline and city parks because people aren't following those social distancing guidelines. 11 Alive's Doug Richards explains why the mayor is standing firm for now. The Atlanta Beltline seemed to be a magnet for visitors during warm spring weather last weekend, and that in spite of health recommendations urging people to keep a social distance of six feet or more to keep from spreading COVID-19. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottom says she saw it herself on a long drive through the city Monday. It's very clear that the messaging is still not resonating with many people. Bottoms spoke on a conference call with city council members. Bottoms has issued a stay-at-home order for city residents, but has specifically exempted visits to the Beltline and parks. And residents packed them last weekend. Atlanta City Councilman Michael Julian Bond asked the mayor to do more. For you to close the trails, close the parks, and if you can restrict people being in stores, I implore you to do that. Bond talked with us afterward. The city would have to limit the access to these parks and trails. It would send a definite message to the community that this is a serious pandemic. I'm a, a lawyer. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an infectious disease expert. Bottom said her experts have told her shutting down parks and the Beltline would not be effective. Councilman Dustin Hillis also suggested a more aggressive approach. Maybe some enhanced enforcement is the next step, maybe not a complete closure, but and some additional steps implemented to get this drilled into people's heads. So Councilman Bond says he lost an aunt, Nancy Finney, to COVID-19 yesterday. Bottoms did not rule out any adjustments in the city's emergency order and predicted that the stay-at-home order would be extended beyond its current April 6th expiration. A small Georgia community is now right in the middle of the crosshairs of all of this. It is incredible what's going on in Doherty County when you consider that they've had more deaths there than the extra, you know, the, the larger populated counties of, of Gwinnett or Fulton or Cobb or DeKalb counties. It has been quite a story. And even though it is a small place, a small county, small population, this has impacted so many people largely in our state. Caitlin Ross explains why the governor now is sending the National Guard to Albany. Terrica Parks has had the flu before. She says COVID-19 is nothing like that. It felt like I had a, a tractor trailer sitting on top of my chest. I couldn't do the simple things. The 28-year-old contracted the virus from a church service on March 10th. She says her symptoms got so bad, she didn't know if she was going to make it. I was ready to just, just pretty much give up my fight. I told my husband, I said, you know what, I can't fight anymore because that's how bad I felt. Governor Brian Kemp said Albany in Doherty County, Georgia, is a major hotspot for the virus, and it's spreading rapidly. Yesterday at noon, there were 267 cases. By 4 p.m. today, there were 462. Kemp is sending in National Guard troops to help support health care workers there. They're frontline health care workers because we've got to keep them in the game. They're the ones that are protecting us. The county has traced the outbreak there to a large funeral February 29th that the governor is calling a super spreading event where a small number of people cause a large number of infections. Still, the governor is hopeful the state will get past this. We can do that in the state. The Albany, Southwest Georgia area will be one of the first places that we implement that just because of the situation that we have on the ground. Terrica agrees as long as people take this virus seriously. I'm very thankful that they were so innovative. You know, they had a plan and then they put the plan into place. Today, the governor announced a way to ramp up the state's testing. The state is partnering with the University System of Georgia, Georgia Public Health Laboratory, and Emory University to increase the ability to run COVID-19 tests. The goal is for labs to process more than 3,000 samples per day. We've gotten questions from viewers who say they are watching the number of cases reported from their local hospitals, but they aren't showing up on the official state list of confirmed cases, at least not right away. They're right. The information flow can be slow as things around us are happening so fast. The governor said last week that the state is sometimes operating off of old information. The data that we're seeing today is two weeks old. Uh, the data that we're going to see two weeks from now is going to be what really happened today. 
So you can think of it this way. The process for reporting cases is like a relay, handing off information. Individual hospitals and medical practices report to counties. The counties collect all of that information and report it to the state. Then the state releases those numbers to the public. We don't know for sure how long it takes for all of that information to make it all the way through the relay from hospitals to you, but we know it is not instant and can even take weeks. But the governor is hoping this new increased testing capacity in partnership with public colleges and universities will help get the state more useful information, saying, quote, we hope this surge capacity plan will allow federal and state public health officials to gain a more complete picture of COVID-19 s impact on Georgia and better inform our collective decisions going forward. As researchers around the world continue working on a vaccine for COVID-19, a Cobb County biotech company will soon begin testing their vaccines to see what they look like. Joe Hankey first talked with the company CEO today. We're able to develop uh, the construct of the vaccine, meaning the basis of a vaccine to start some form of testing. Animal testing, imaginicity testing, usually within three months. So CEO David Dodd of Cobb County based GeoVax first talked with us in late January and right on schedule, his team will begin testing for a COVID-19 vaccine in the next one to two weeks. We're working on a timeline that would allow us to go forward through animal testing and enter human testing perhaps as early as the end of this year. Dodd says GeoVax's research led to three different COVID-19 vaccine recipes or candidates. These will now be used for animal testing with the goal of moving the best one on to human testing. Motion is adopted. Inside the $2.2 trillion coronavirus relief package Congress recently passed and President Donald Trump signed is at least $3.5 billion in funding for BARDA, a U.S. Department of Health and Human Services agency overseeing the manufacturing, production, and purchasing of a COVID-19 vaccine and treatments. Dodd says his Cobb County-based company is being considered for a piece of the funding, which could boost GeoVax's research. I've been in uh, Washington, D.C. I've been um, on the phone. We've had a lot of good dialogue, I say, with uh, Health and Human Services. And currently at Emory University, Dr. Evan Anderson says adults are already enrolled in a separate clinical trial of a vaccine designed to prevent COVID-19. This study is moving very, very quickly. Uh, we were literally asked to be involved with helping to uh, conduct the study just two weeks ago. The study at Emory is sponsored by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Dodd says if GeoVax's human testing later this year is successful, they could have a vaccine available in late 2021. He takes pride in knowing the solution to COVID-19 could come from the metro Atlanta area. I would stress that the epicenter of prevention and therapeutics against various uh, challenging infectious pathogens is metro Atlanta. Coming up, the fastest way to get your COVID-19 stimulus check from the federal government. I'm storm tracker meteorologist Samantha Moore forecasting from my home this evening and the way that that line of severe storms moved through a lot of trees down and damaging winds were widespread this afternoon. So coming up, we'll talk about the changes you can expect as you head out the door tomorrow morning. Oh man, I was so scared. Like, I literally thought I wasn't going to make it. So to come in prime time, an Atlanta nurse practitioner and an athlete nearly lost his life to the coronavirus. How he ended up in the ICU and his message to others who don't think they're at risk for the virus. His and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey, look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's 
Where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And, of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I... The COVID-19 headlines, they are rolling. They come at a very fast and furious pace. It is difficult to keep up with it, so we want to make sure that you are on top of everything you need to know tonight. These are three stories that you may have missed today. Here we go. 20 soldiers are now headed to Pelham, Georgia. That's in Mitchell County, not far from Albany. They will be stationed at Pelman Parkway Nursing Home to assist with sanitation methods. Train staff on utilizing more aggressive infectious disease control measures and thoroughly cleaning the facility too. So far, there have been five confirmed cases inside that facility. First, the state is deploying over 100 guardsmen to long-term care facilities with COVID-19 cases. DeKalb County is urging residents to use their new COVID-19 call center. The numbers at the top of your screen, residents who call will be provided information related to risk, prevention symptoms, isolation, community resources, and testing. Currently, there are 325 confirmed cases and three deaths in DeKalb County. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms launching a fundraiser to support residents struggling financially during the pandemic. The initiative is called ATL Strong. Donations will support food security for children and seniors and support for small businesses and a whole lot more. For more information on how you can help, you can visit atlstrong.com. O -R -G. The Dow and the S&P 500 saw their worst first quarter in history. Both are now down at least 20% since the start of the year after coronavirus fears sent the markets tumbling. And that's left many afraid that a recession is around the corner. Finance is a big concern for many right now, and the questions have not stopped coming in about the $2 trillion economic relief bill and if you qualify for a check from the government. So as a reminder, people who earn less than $75,000 will get up to $1,200 from the government, plus $500 more per child. The amount goes down by $500, by $5 rather, for every $100 earned. Now, people who make more than $99,000 won't get a check, and married couples with no children who earn more than $198,000 also won't get any money. Today, the IRS put out more information on the fastest way to get a check. If you filed your taxes in 2018 or 2019 with your bank information, the government will put the money right into your account. We have a calculator tool that can help you figure out exactly how much money you will qualify for. If you'd like to check it out, we can get a link straight to you. Just text the word check to the number on your screen. It's 404-885-7600. Again, text the word check and we'll send that link to your phone. Well, your 11 Alive storm trackers were very busy today as that line of strong to severe storms blew through Georgia and blew down numerous trees. We had many reports of trees blocking roads, trees on top of garages, homes, tool sheds, just wreaking destruction everywhere as that line of storms came sweeping across at a very fast speed. So the first one was in Noonan County by our storm tracker, Alicia, and then in Cherokee County, their emergency manager in ball ground posted this tree that was snapped during the storms as they moved through Cherokee County uh, earlier in the morning. So uh, we're looking at conditions that have really improved this afternoon and evening as that line is moving out of Georgia right now. So we saw those really gusty winds up around 76 miles per hour as they blew through. Those were some of the reports. And that's why we saw so many trees down as those, I mean, those, that's hurricane force winds, basically, a category one strength winds anyway. So 64 was our high today. We were actually a little bit below average. We should be right around 69 this time of year. So this frontal system is ushered 
ushering much cooler air, and it's going to be a bit of an awakening for us tomorrow morning as we head out the door because temperatures are going to be down in the low 40s here and even in the 30s in some of our North Georgia towns as we head out the door. And we picked up a little over a third of an inch of rain at the airport. We picked up a half an inch of rain here in Marietta this afternoon. So we're looking at cooler temperatures as we head in through the next 24 to 48 hours. It'll be a dry pattern to enjoy through the end of the week and into the beginning of the weekend. And then uh, temperatures are going to be warming back up pretty quickly. We'll be back up into the 70s before we know it once again. So a couple of cool mornings with comfortable afternoons and then temperatures will once again rebound. So right now we're looking at 45 in Blairsville, 50 in Canton. It's 53 in Atlanta at the moment. And those temperatures will be dropping off pretty quickly overnight tonight. So the next 12 hours, we'll see those temps getting down into the low 40s. Some of those towns, though, will be even chillier than that in Blairsville, 36. Uh, during the early morning hours, 39 in Clayton, and we'll see 43 in Carrollton. It'll be a chilly start to the day, and then we'll warm it up. Still below average during the afternoon, but if you're in a sunny spot in a in a wind protected area, it's going to be a beautiful day. Uh, the only thing is that it'll start drying out again, and we'll have issues with pollen. We'll have more on our pollen situation coming up. We were still extremely high today. We're hoping for some improvement after today's rain. So, what is left of our few showers scooting off to the east? We'll see improving conditions overnight and a nice dry northwesterly flow as we head into our Wednesday. So, a dry pattern for the next few days where we can get out and enjoy and hopefully the pollen will be lower for at least the next day or so. We'll keep our fingers crossed and we'll let you know early tomorrow morning what the latest pollen counts are. Chesley McNeil will be manning the desk early to start the day. So 43 tonight overnight will be uh, what we should be around midtown, 65 for high tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine the next few days, warming up into the 70s once we get into the end of the week and the weekend. And then we'll see those chances for rain start to creep back into the forecast as we head into Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Sam, thank you. While many businesses are closed right now, some remain open, deemed essential businesses under emergency orders. But some of them may not seem as obvious as others. Elwin Lopez explains. Having a vehicle to be able to be mobile is very, very important. Of course, it's essential. Emil Alvin is the owner of ANS Auto Services, an auto repair shop on Buford Highway. If you really need a service on your vehicle, we come to Woodstock if we have to. His doors continue to remain open as others around him have closed during the COVID-19 pandemic. It's essential, he says, as nurses and doctors need to get to and from the hospital. And others also need to get around as they get groceries and go to the pharmacy. Alvin says his shop even has a solution for those wanting to keep their social distance. We're going to pick up your car from your house. We're going to bring it back to the shop, cover the seats with plastic, cover the floor with the floor mat, use the gloves. We're going to do the repair, take it back to your house. Like Alvin, veterinarian Dr. Michael Good continues to clock in as people remain at home with their pets and need services. We wear masks, we wear gloves. And what we try to do is get the people in a room and then we, then I will talk to them, uh, but I'm protected, uh, you know, and, and they're not going to get anything from me um, other than hopefully good advice. Cities and counties have different views of what they consider essential businesses, but there are some commonalities. Hospitals, labs, and pharmacies across the board are staying open. Firefighters and police officers, of course, still working. Grocery stores and restaurants that allow takeout are open, along with businesses and agencies that help people get to those essential jobs, like gas stations and public transit. Before we go to break, a grandmother in Buffalo, New York, found a creative way to entertain her grandchildren from a safe distance. Every day she comes over a different costume and dances outside the window and waves. She has been Darth Vader, a Ninja Turtle, Batman, and a dancing leprechaun for St. Patrick's Day. Her daughter says she has no idea where her mother's getting all of these costumes, but she is nonetheless grateful because this is how she is keeping the family together and keeping them smiling. This YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt?
Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, <laughs> on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. Yeah. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> From the beginning, we made a commitment at 11 Alive to bring you facts, not fear, because information can actually help settle the fears that can feel like they're swirling around us. There's so much information to sort through. We're so glad to have NBC medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres joining us from my home in South Atlanta to his in New York City. John, I wanted to start off with what we're seeing all over social media, people sharing patterns for making their own masks. Do people need to be wearing them who should be sort through that information that's going around so much right now. Cheryl, this is a great mask debate because you're getting some experts on one side saying, you know, they might help out a little bit, but you're getting the CDC and the World Health Organization both, co both coming out today saying, you know, they're not really going to help. People shouldn't be wearing them in the public. And one of the main reasons is because there's actually some studies showing that they could make things a little bit worse and make it more likely to catch the virus. Here's why. When people wear masks, if they don't wear them appropriately, if they're not putting them on over their nose and their mouth and not keep and keeping them dry, then the virus could actually get in there, especially if they get inside that six foot perimeter we usually talk about that social distancing and it gives people a false sense of security so they get closer to other people on top of that it's not protecting the eyes which is another way the virus can get in but some experts are saying hold on a second it might offer a little bit of protection and what a lot of people are saying is you know let's keep everybody says the surgical masks the n95 masks reserve those for the frontline workers they need those desperately because they're constantly in, in uh, somebody's face who might have coronavirus. Mm -hmm. But for everybody else, uh, you know, will these help a little bit? They might offer a little bit of protection, but you have to wear them appropriately. You have to wear them constantly. The best protection you can get, washing your hands, keeping that six, six foot dif distance. There's not much else you can do that's better than that. All right, a question we're getting a lot, I think you are as well. Once someone has COVID-19 and they recover, are they essentially immune, like if you had the chicken pox, or can you get that virus again? But the bottom line is it doesn't seem to be because this virus really isn't mutating as it goes around the world and we don't think it's going to mutate much going forward once you get the virus in your body you build up antibodies the virus goes away those antibodies stick around and they help protect you from getting it a second time problem is we don't know how long that protection is going to last it might last a year it might last longer main thing is going forward especially if it comes back next year we all need to keep our guard up and make sure we're doing the things we need to do to stay safe especially while they're developing the medicines and the vaccines and everything else that are going to help us out in the long run 
So to come, a Metro Atlanta County says it will fine even jail residents for violating stay at home curfews. Next, we walk you through the guidelines and show you how to make sure you are not one of them. It's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hence. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a It was a somber day in Italy. The country and the Vatican observed a moment of silence and flew flags at half-mast. It was a tribute to the more than 12,000 Italians who have lost their lives to COVID-19. Here in Georgia, there are now more than 4,000 confirmed cases and 125 people have died statewide. As counties are taking drastic measures to make sure that all of these stay-at-home edicts are indeed followed by everyone, violators in Gwinnett could be st uh, facing a very stiff fine. Christy Diaz has more on even those who might look at jail time. Gwinnett County is not playing around. The Solicitor General says anyone who violates this stay at home order could face 60 days in jail or a thousand dollar fine. They're taking these strict measures because Gwinnett County is a hot spot in Georgia, ranking in the top five of counties with the most cases. The stay in place order went into effect over the weekend and covers all 16 cities in Gwinnett County. We have worked together to slow the spread of the virus. Now I asked the county how they plan to enforce this. They said law enforcement is not the lead here. Code enforcement is. They'll be making sure non-essential businesses are complying and helping essential businesses with their social distancing. Police will mostly be patrolling the public spaces the county has already closed. Things like making sure people don't play on a roped off playground. Gwinnett County PD says their biggest focus is on educating the public and giving them the opportunity to comply. They'll handle other complaints as they come in. 
Now, you're still allowed to go out for essential reasons. Think food, safety, medical, even working for an essential business. You're even allowed to go out and walk on a trail as long as you practice social distancing. But if you're out there for any other reason, you could face a misdemeanor charge. The Coca-Cola company dropped off 6,000 pounds of plastic sheeting to some college students in Atlanta. The reason? Those students are making thousands of medical shields and their work is getting the attention of some of Georgia's business, biggest, business, business, biggest businesses there, Rudder. It is a joint biomedical engineering lab with Georgia Tech and Emory. In one week, they have designed and started production and students have already delivered thousands of shields to doctors and nurses. They'll make more now that the businesses are joining in the effort. This is a really unprecedented time. Um, this, uh, a lot of people are able to come together and collaborate in a way that doesn't happen in the normal, um, the normal climate. Um, and I think it's really impressive the way that people are just willing to collaborate. In companies like Laser Tech, uh, Georgia Pacific uh, donating materials to us as well as DuPont, uh, DuPontasian, uh, they donated some, uh, some materials as well. And so uh, we're beginning to see Coca-Cola and Lockheed Martin and others come on board. So we're really, really thankful for that. Well, coming up in prime time, we will take you inside the lab and talk more about how they were able to do it all so quickly. Along with making medical gear, the University System of Georgia is working to redirect gloves, masks, medical gowns, goggles, and sanitizing supplies to get more to our hospitals. All 26 university system institutions are part of this effort, proof that you can get a lot done when you work together. For a lot of Atlantans, the past few days have been a time of reflection about the life and times of the Reverend Joseph E. Lowry. It would not be Atlanta without Reverend Lowry and his huge impact here. He was always in this city after 1961. He lived here, he moved here in 1968. And for any of us who are lucky enough to have spent some time with him and known him, he will always be missed. A sharp-dressed man who is always on the right side of history, a rapier wit who was always willing to carve up those who got in the way, but a keen sense of humor. He was, he was a very, very special man, needless to say. When you look at all of the things that he accomplished in this country for people, uh, it, it really is astounding. And even though uh, it, it feels like we're centered around COVID-19 right now, there is talk about his funeral. It's going to be very small for right now. His daughter announced that it will be private and only close family members will be there. Uh, the Reverend Lowry, of course, works side by side with Dr. King, a founding member of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the SELC, and the longest serving president as well. In 09, he gave the benediction during the inauguration of President Obama. Cheryl Lowry says, although you cannot celebrate his life together because of COVID-19 right now. Still, there are those who are thinking of him in the community. Again, our family and the Lowry Institute change agents are so grateful for your calls and your texts from the civil rights family, from people all across walks of life in the globe. The tweets, the posts have just been incredible. And from our Atlanta, a city that he loved and a people that loved him, thank you. Reverend Lowry's family has set a date for a public memorial on October 6th, and that would have been his 99th birthday. His daughter says that once we can all be together again, we will be able to mourn his loss properly, and that will be a big, big celebration. We look forward to it. Certainly a huge life and legacy there. Well, how do you shape love in the age of coronavirus? One couple from coming didn't want to wait to have to get married and had a wedding that they never expected. 11 Alive's Matt Pearl has their story. We have been told to isolate. We have been forced to postpone. Madeline Haston and John Orr had other plans. We just wanted to move on in our lives and get to live together. For years, they were next door neighbors, raising their own families. After both lost their spouses, John reached out for a companion and found new love. Loved being together, we have fun, we laugh, and we're, we appreciate life, and we're just thankful to be in love and at this age, too. That's why at the end of last year, John proposed. It's why they set their wedding date for just three months later, March 29th right as COVID-19 halted any large gatherings. We needed to go ahead and, and do something we felt like doing it. We didn't need to wait any longer. You may kiss your new bride. 
so they didn't. On March 29th, Madeline and John had their wedding, and minutes later... And they said, go out on the lawn, and here came the cars. Nine-year-old holding the sign out saying, congratulations, Grandma, me, and John. And then here comes all our Sunday school friends in their cars. They couldn't gather together, so the crowd gathered as the new rules dictate. Feet apart, in their cars, honking horns. It just kept going and going, all this excitement. It was so fun. We just felt overwhelmed, really, didn't we? We sure did. We must isolate. We may need to postpone. Or we can follow Madeline, John, and their families and find a way to savor our days. We're just looking forward to the future. I hope we got a long time to go. Still to come, the president claims the U.S. is doing more COVID-19 testing than anywhere else. Next, we look at the numbers and how Georgia ranks among other U.S. states. Well, those pollen counts still very high before the rain swept through today. So this morning's pollen count still extremely high, just under 3,000 particulates per cubic meter of air. So coming up, the changes you might expect as we head into the middle of the week. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So What's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. Ah. You're all, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Here in Georgia, the coronavirus still making a major impact. So far, there are now more than 4,000 confirmed cases with nearly 600 in Fulton County alone. 125 people have died statewide. 
The United States has the most confirmed cases worldwide with more than 181,000. Italy has just over 105,000 and Spain is now ahead of China. We have done more tests by far than any country in the world, by far. President Trump insisting the U.S. is doing more COVID-19 testing than anywhere else in the world. Yesterday, the White House announced it has been uh, administering almost 900,000 tests across the United States. That, according to NBC News, in a country of 327 million, that is about one in 366 people. Today, we received the latest numbers on the testing here in Georgia. So far, there have been more than 16,000 tests administered. We compared that to other southern and mid-Atlantic states. According to COVIDtracking.com, North Carolina has administered just over 23,000 tests. Maryland, about the same number as Georgia and Alabama, more than 6,600. Earlier today, Governor Kemp announced a new initiative to ramp up Georgia labs to process up to 3,000 samples a day. I'm meteorologist Samantha Moore forecasting from my basement studio here in Cobb County and everyone saw some rain today as that line of strong to severe storms whipped across Georgia at a really fast speed bringing down hundreds of trees as it plowed across. Uh, Susie Berta in Noonan uh, posted these pictures on our 11 Alive Storm Tracker Facebook page of multiple trees down on her property. She said thank goodness her house and garage were okay but her shed, her, um, her trailer, uh, some other areas were really affected by all the trees that come crashing down. So Susie, we appreciate you uh, posting those pictures for us. And thank goodness your house, your home and your garage are all right. And you're okay, most importantly. So that line moved through during the late morning and early afternoon hours. It brought in those winds that were over 70 miles per hour as it moved in across the Atlanta metro area. So we're looking at a cooler pattern. It'll be a dry pattern for a few days so that'll be nice hopefully less pollen as we, at least we head into the middle of the week maybe Thursday after that rain moved through because we picked up around a third of an inch to as much of an inch across the Atlanta area so our pollen count before the rain was down a bit but still extremely high just under 3,000 particulates per cubic meter and it's those trees that are really the problem right now the oak pine mulberry sweet gum and sycamore trees also the grasses are starting to move up a little bit too if you've noticed the lawns are starting to green up so we are starting to see some uh, grass pollen as well. And uh, that pollen count peaked on Sunday when we were up just short of 9,000. Incredible. It came down a little bit yesterday, but still was incredibly high. And we were still extremely high today. So I will be anxious to hear what the reports are, what the levels are early tomorrow morning. And Chesley McNeil will have that for you right here on 11 Alive as uh, we head into the day. So as we look at those temperatures, 45 right now in Blairsville, 47 in Clayton, 53 in Atlanta, and the next 12 hours we'll see those temperatures starting to drop with the clearing skies overnight. We'll see temps down in the low 40s to start tomorrow. So it's going to feel nippy, downright nippy when you step out to walk the dog early tomorrow morning. It's going to feel like it's 36 in Blairsville, 37 in Clayton, 41 in Duluth, Atlanta, Carrollton, and 40 in Marietta. It is going to be a chilly start, and it's going to be breezy too. So those winds will be up around 15 miles per hour out of the northwest. That's going to make it feel chillier. Now, if you're in a wind uh, protected spot with all the sunshine tomorrow and temperatures in the mid to upper 50s for much of the afternoon and getting into the low 60s in the warmest part of the day, it's going to feel incredible and hopefully we'll be able to breathe a little easier for a while. So those showers that are lingering will move out and we'll see those northwesterly winds kick in as we head into the overnight hours and that'll bring in that cooler air but a dry pattern for us as we head into the next few days. So enjoy your Wednesday. We have tens on the wasometer for Wednesday and Thursday. Chilly starts but really nice afternoons. Mid 60s on Wednesday, low 70s on Thursday. Getting into Friday, we're warming back up into the mid 70s and we should see a very nice start to the weekend. Another 10 on the wasometer. And then those rain chances start to creep in Sunday and into the beginning of next week. I'm Samantha Moore, uh, one of your 11 Alive Storm Trackers, forecasting from Marietta tonight.
you see on the internet, stuff that you see on Facebook, on social media as well. And this is one that we have heard of and heard from, and that is uh, if asthma inhalers and nebulizers are safe to use during the pandemic. We had our Verify team dig into that question. Here's Jason Puckett. The CDC does say that people with asthma may be at a higher risk of getting very sick from COVID-19. And a number of you asked us whether asthma inhalers or nebulizers could make COVID-19 symptoms worse or potentially spread the virus. To answer, we went straight to the CDC and the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. Let's break this into two quick questions. One, will my steroid medication cause issues? No, according to the AAFA and CDC, corticosteroids are not a risk for people with asthma right now. They recommend you keep taking your prescribed medications, and that applies to pills, nasal sprays, and inhalers. Second question, can inhalers or nebulizers spread the virus? For a quick explanation, inhalers are those small devices that deliver meds through puffs you inhale. Nebulizers are larger and actually turn liquid medications into a mist you can inhale. The AAFA says inhalers are fine and should be used when possible, but they do say nebulizers could increase the risk of spreading the virus. That mist that's being created could carry the virus if someone sick was using it. Now that doesn't mean you can't use a nebulizer, especially if you need one because you're having an asthma attack. The AAFA just says to be cautious and consider limiting the number of people in the room. If you've got more questions for us to look into, send us an email. There is a lot of information to sort through right now, so here are three stories that you might have missed today. Walmart will begin checking the temperatures of its employees here in the United States. They are also uh, have to answer health screening questions before working. Any associate who comes in with a temperature of at least 100 degrees will have to go home. Walmart says those employees will still be paid. The coronavirus is hitting the NYPD hard. According to the commissioner, about 5,500 officers, 15% of the force has called out sick, and the number continues to rise. Some are getting to the other side of COVID-19. 17 officers who tested positive have now recovered and are back on the job. The U.S. Department of Transportation is now allowing airlines to consolidate competing flight routes. So Delta and American passengers could soon be sharing a plane. This comes after weeks of airlines flying nearly empty planes. According to NBC News, flights to some airports will now be combined in an effort to lower the number of planes in the air and also to cut costs. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say you won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. 
where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food, and of course you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go away. Oh, Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. Yeah. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all. I'm Latasha Givens, and I've spent part of the day talking to seniors who should be celebrating their last weeks of high school, but all the milestones and rites of passage now hang in the balance due to COVID-19. Brooklyn Gilliam. Graduation is really the main thing. Like, we're, we're going to be disappointed if we're not able to walk this stage. Mullen West. It's been very disappointing. Like our prom was supposed to be last week, and we missed our prom. And Rashawn Ray are all Georgia high school seniors. And it's kind of hard not seeing the people that I've known probably since the seventh grade, eighth grade, not being, not seeing them for weeks at a time. It's kind of, it's kind of difficult. Instead of traveling for spring break and planning graduation parties, they're isolated. The mall being closed, movies, we can't go out to eat, can't go in groups to like certain areas. Gilliam, a senior at McEachern High School, has been accepted to seven state universities, but can only share excitement over the phone. It's very depressing because I'm, I'm alone most of the time, so it's like all we can do is talk over the phone and contact through social media. The students do not like Mullen the West, class valedictorian at Booker T. Washington High, may not be able to give his commencement speech. The football star has already been accepted to Howard University, but he says some of his classmates were hoping to use this spring sports season to determine where they would go. I have a lot of peers who are kind of like heartbroken because their season were ended early. A lot of a lot of kids like losing scholarship offers and recruitment, losing all of that. Vashon Ray, also a senior at Booker T. Washington, was accepted to Dartmouth last Thursday. A dream come true. Now he's holding out hope of sporting a cap and gown and walking across the stage at his commencement ceremony. These teens have one message they want every Georgian to hear. Stay in the house so it won't spread. Stay strong, uh, stay optimistic, wash your hands, stay home. So I would just tell people to keep their head up, um, stay home. Because uh, we'll all get through this. Most districts have not officially canceled graduation ceremonies, and some of them are still hoping to fit prom in if students are allowed to return to school in enough time. Congrats to both of them, Howard and Dartmouth. Man, those are great, great schools. Well, he is a nurse practitioner, an athlete in nearly perfect health. Then he said the coronavirus almost killed him. His story of recovery and survival still to come on prime time. Minutes or less, quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the rush block on the morning rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. 
there are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? How do you say thank you to the men and women risking their lives every day to fight coronavirus on the front lines? It's hard to show our appreciation enough for our health care workers when we have to stay so far away. Caitlin Ross shows us a movement to create an outpouring of love and support. America's heroes aren't wearing capes. They're in scrubs. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing. It's nearly impossible to convey our gratitude. So we honk, holler, and pray. We are outside of the hospital right now, and we're praying over the hospital along with many, many people from Noonan. We make signs and tie white ribbons around trees. There are donations, too. <laughs> Supplies and food anything to bring a smile to our heroes in the midst of this crisis. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Signs of progress, even as the numbers continue to rise. Nearly 4,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus in Georgia tonight as the death toll in the United States exceeds those killed by COVID-19 in China, where this all started. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ron Jones reporting live from my home. And I'm Natisha Lance from our studio in Midtown. The governor announces a partnership he says will dramatically increase COVID-19 testing here in Georgia. But we start tonight thinking of the 125 families in Georgia who have lost a loved one to the coronavirus. Based on limited testing, there are 4,117 confirmed cases, nearly 900 people in the hospital. In the month since the first cases were confirmed, 16,181 tests were processed in Georgia. Again, our testing limitations should be changing very soon. We will have more on that in just a moment. Many of the state's COVID-19 resources are being sent to a small Georgia community considered one of the country's hotspots. Our Caitlin Ross reports. Yesterday at noon, Doherty County had 267 cases. Today, by 4 p.m., they had 462. Governor Brian Kemp is sending the National Guard in to help health care workers who are exhausted by the effort. They're frontline health care workers because we've got to keep them in the game. They're the ones that are protecting us. 18 people in the county have died from the virus. Health officials believe it started to spread there after a large funeral for a beloved former custodian, where a small number of infected people passed the virus to a large population. Still, he is hopeful the state and the county will be in much better shape soon. Join us in this cause just for a few more weeks and we will be on the other side of this and we will come out stronger than ever before. You know, Governor Brian Kemp made an announcement today that can make a huge dent, hopefully a huge dent, in uh, getting those COVID-19 tests and getting the results quickly. So this is what we know so far. 3,000 tests a day. To put that into perspective, folks, as of today, Georgia has pro processed a total of a little more than 16,000 tests at commercial and state labs since the coronavirus outbreak started about a month ago. We believe that in the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to test up to 3,000 samples a day that will help us on the battle as well. So the governor says right now they're working off old data, and that data is about two weeks old. So 
faster test processing would change all of that. Of course, that makes a lot of sense, giving our health officials a better picture of how this virus is actually spreading across the state of Georgia. Now, the state says it now has more equipment and testing supplies to expand within a week. That is great news for all of us here in Georgia. And the test kits are now being rationed in our state for now. But hopefully we won't have to do that any longer, Natisha. Well, Ron, the pandemic has also left thousands of Georgians without jobs, making the process to file for unemployment. Unfortunately, one of the most popular stories on 11alive.com right now. But now many people say the process is taking too long. 11alive's Chenu Her took those concerns to the Georgia Department of Labor. Many Georgians looking for answers about the filing process. The Georgia Department of Labor says it processed about 12,000 unemployment claims as of last week. Before this pandemic, the DOL processed only about 5,000 per week. By next week, the DOL says those numbers could be astronomical. Department of Labor is trying to keep things efficient, running smooth. 11 Alive's financial expert Andrew Pulo says the department is doing the best it can to handle all of the claims. And with each individual claim filed, it could take at least two weeks to process. Well, just be mm. patient. They worked very hard, obviously, trying to make things happen for everyone. But just like anyone else, we're all overloaded right now, mm. trying to uh, help everyone. So. The DOL tells 11 Alive it's working every day to improve the system. If possible, it recommends people have their employers file a claim on their behalf if they're only out of work temporarily. Those claims can be automated. And they've asked all employers to file on behalf of their employees. Uh, you got to get a little bit of time. They're working uh, around the clock to make it work, but we're starting to see unemployment claims being paid. The best resource right now for people with questions is the Department of Labor website with specific pages set up for those affected by COVID-19. The DOL says on an average week, the site gets about 55,000 visitors. Last week, it got more than 100,000 hits in one day. Atlanta, like many communities, is under a stay at home order, but exceptions are made for businesses and services that are deemed quote unquote essential. There is a surprisingly long list of those that qualify, including health care, restaurants and grocery stores, banks and gas stations. There's also a lot of people still working every day, performing tasks you might not think about until you need them. Eleven Alive's Owen Lopez spoke to some people learning to do their jobs in the COVID-19 era. Of course, it's very, very unusual, but I am glad that I have this chance at least to do a little bit help into my uh, community. Emil Alvin says all the shops around him are closed due to COVID-19, but his auto repair shop, a &S Services, remains open as medical staff need to be able to get to and from the hospitals and others need to get groceries and medicine. Like him is veterinarian Dr. Michael Good. We're trying to keep our waiting room empty. So we bring them in one at a time. One at a time to adhere to CDC's advice of social distancing as he continues to see people as they bring in their pets for services. But we wear masks, we wear gloves. I've tried to make myself accessible during these tough times. All right, so get this. Doctors and researchers in Metro Atlanta are beginning to test, test possible COVID-19 vaccines. 11 Alive's Joe Hinky shows us two possibilities. We first visited Geovax, a Cobb County biotech company in late January, as it began researching for a possible COVID-19 vaccine. Now, a couple of months later, its CEO says testing will begin on animals in the next one to two weeks. Uh, you may or may not know that 70 plus percent of the genetic structure of the SARS virus and COVID-19 are identical, so one can learn a lot from that. David Dodd's team applied research from the 2002 SARS outbreak to their work now on coronavirus, allowing them to speed up the vaccine development process. They have created three different vaccine candidates. The goal, find the best one during animal testing and then use it for human testing later this year. Meanwhile, over at Emory University, adults have already signed up for and are testing a vaccine to prevent COVID-19. It is the first such vaccine to be tested in the U.S. Sean Doyle is one of the participants. It seems like one of the best ways to be able to contribute to the response no would be to um, participate in this vaccine trial that Emory is conducting along with other institutions. Emory is the second second location after Seattle to test the vaccine in a study sponsored by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Back at Geovax and Cobb, Dodd says his team is hopeful their human testing later this year will be successful and Geovax can find an effective vaccine. 
it would certainly not be uh, for for this year. It might would be uh, completed and ready as one would be ending the following year. Tonight, two Atlanta City Council members are urging the mayor to take more aggressive action to stop the spread of the virus. One employed her to close city parks and the Beltline. 11 Alive's Doug Richards explains how the councilman's family has been personally affected by the outbreak. This occurred during a conference call between Mayor Bottoms and members of the city council this morning. While Mayor Bottoms has issued a stay-at-home order to city residents, the order exempts visits to the Beltline and city parks. And the Beltline was pretty packed last weekend, despite health experts urging people to keep a six-foot distance from each other. Councilman Michael Bond implored Bottoms to close the Beltline and city parks to send a message that the pandemic is killing people. We need to take drastic, what might be viewed by some as drastic, uh, very serious uh, steps to cut off the access that they may have uh, to spread the disease in lar large groups. Bond said he lost his aunt, Nancy Feeney, to COVID-19 just yesterday. Councilman Dustin Hillis also urged Bottoms to step up enforcement of the stay-at-home order. Bottoms told council members that health experts have told her that closing the parks and the Beltline would not necessarily be an effective way to fight the pandemic. You know, this next story is about Atlanta college students. They're inspired, hopefully inspired, to stop the spread and stop the coronavirus. However, they were thinking one day we'll be able to help the world. Well, that one day or that someday is today. Here's Cheryl. The need is now and growing by the day. They were quick to jump on board and to help. It compelled a team inside a lab with both Georgia Tech and Emory students to help. We need all hands on deck in this crisis. Cuts four shields at once. They designed and started rapid production of face shields for medical workers. The goal is to meet the needs locally and to, uh, to actually supply the Department of Public Health Georgia and when they have enough to supply the federal uh, Department of Public Health uh, stockpile. 10 to 20 times what we what we usually have. Carrie Love is Emory Healthcare's Director of Infection Prevention and a nurse, and she was the go-between taking the design from the lab to the front line. Make a few suggestions, get it back to them. They made those edits. The students that were involved in this project actually did a great job to address those needs for the clinicians immediately. It had to be just right, but it had to be done fast. When a physician comes to you and says every hour that we don't have these, someone is at risk of dying, it really uh, compels you to move faster and, and move faster than you thought you could. They've now made their first deliveries to Emory Hospital. This is a really unprecedented time. A lot of people are able to come together and collaborate in a way that doesn't happen in the normal climate. The next generation of scientists helping lead the way, compelling others to join them. Straight ahead, the fastest way to get your COVID-19 stimulus check from the federal government. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Back in the studio tonight, as I was in early today, tracking some of those storms that came through earlier today. They have now moved out. Now we're dealing with much cooler air moving our way. We'll let you know if those storms mixed with the cooler air will help our pollen count for tomorrow. More on that coming up. And as we go to break, we want to share okay, a just did that little tease there to smile. On. The grandma in Buffalo isn't letting coronavirus keep her from entertaining her grandkids. She shows up outside their house each and every day in a different costume. Darth Vader one day, Ninja Turtle another, and Batman using her creativity to keep her family connected. Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. 
where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So y'all just do what I say. In the An Atlanta nurse practitioner is recovering after almost losing his life to the coronavirus. He doesn't know how he contracted it, but he spent 10 days in the ICU fighting for his survival. Reveal investigator Andy Parati recently spoke with him. When he took this picture, Quan James thought it could be his last. Man, I was so scared. Like, I literally thought I wasn't gonna make it. I was freaking out. Like, I would never forget it, ever. It started about three weeks ago when the 29-year-old nurse practitioner and avid flag football player thought he had a cold. I was um, having chills, shaking, had a fever. I was sweating. Um, I wasn't coughing yet. It wasn't until I went to the hospital when coughing started. He admitted himself into the Emory St. Joseph campus near Dunwoody, where he worked in its ER for nearly five years. At first, staff diagnosed him with pneumonia, but a test later confirmed it was COVID-19. Short time later, he couldn't breathe on his own. And then on top of that, um, the virus caused me to have an enlarged heart, so my heart was working very, very hard for what was going on. So that was another reason why they um, intubated me. The scariest moment happened when his breathing tube clogged, cutting off his oxygen. At that moment in time, I thought I was gonna not make it because it took the nurses a while to get in there. When I think of you, I think of like Iron Man. You can tell that you're super health conscious. You're very aware of your body. This must have been really frustrating, knowing how much you take care of your body for this to happen. It was because before this, I hadn't even had a cold in eight years. And so for this to happen, it was very shocking. After nearly 10 days in the ICU, James is now home. He posted this picture on Facebook to warn other young people who don't think they're at risk that this could happen to them. As someone as healthy as I was, I was literally on my deathbed. And I'm trying to tell people that you need to take care of yourself, you need to take this serious. James isn't sure how he contracted the virus. He specializes in addiction and mental health recovery. So he doesn't work in a traditional hospital setting. James hopes his story is a wake up call for those who don't think they can contract the virus. I'm Andy Parati. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. You can barely see my phone over here on the side of the screen. Uh, it's propped up because I'm doing a Facebook Live right now. A little bit under 200 people on right now. And I'm back in the studio tonight because I was in earlier today as uh, I, we were tracking these storms that were rolling through. And I know I've been talking about being at home and we've been uh, exercising and practicing social distancing. We're still doing that here even though I'm in the studio. We have the uh, Storm Tracker Center sealed off. Only the meteorologists can come in here. So I'm I'm not even around anybody right now either. Take a look at the storms that we were tracking earlier today. That line moved through early this morning. This takes us back 12 hours ago. This whole loop goes through and it was late morning into early afternoon when these storms moved through the Atlanta area. They were stronger down on the south side. You can see a lot of that thunder and lightning with that line that was down to the south of us earlier. And all of these circles that you see here on the map, this is where we have reports of wind damage, mainly from trees down, 
some structures damaged as well. Power outages as many of these spots um, on Facebook Live. A lot of folks on there in the Noonan area in Coweta County near Sonoya are saying that their power is still off down there. And that's where we had, excuse me, a lot of that wind damage with all those circles that you see here. Southern parts of Fayette County and Henry County, Rockdale, Newton County, also right there on the, the uh, DeKalb and the Fulton County line, some damage there. The rain has pushed well out into the Atlantic right now, so we no longer see any storms here. You can see how that was moving out. And we had a tornado watch earlier down in southeast Georgia. That has been canceled as well. So let me show you what we're watching on the bigger picture right now. The pollen count. Now, as you know, we've been dealing with those very high pollen counts. Today, it was down a little bit. 2922 is the pollen count for today. And that number was actually measured before today's rain. So that's a good thing that that number was down a little bit today. And the main pollens present are oak, pine, mulberry, sweet gum, and sycamore. Grasses are in the moderate range. Weeds are low. Uh, the mold is in the moderate range as well. So this is the trend that we've been watching with these numbers. Sunday was the second highest pollen count on record at 89.18. Yesterday it was down a little bit to 71.13. This morning's number down even more to 29.22. With the rain that we had today, as well as the cooler temperatures that are in place, we really think that tomorrow's pollen number hopefully is gonna be lower than this. We're just hoping that wind out there is not stirring up any more pollen, but the cold air not only the rain, but the colder air also helps to inhibit uh, the spread or the explosion of those pollen spores. Right now, a lot of folks on Facebook Live have been talking about how cool it is. It's 51 in Atlanta right now. Carrollton, you're in the 40s. Marietta, Canton, you're in the 40s. Blairsville, Clayton, you're in the 40s. Athens, about 56 degrees. And so we're gonna watch these temperatures tonight with the clouds clearing out that will allow it to cool a little bit faster. And look at that, by tomorrow morning, we're going to start in the lower 40s. There will be some spots outside the city that'll actually be in the upper 30s here early in the morning. We rebound up to about 65 tomorrow afternoon with mostly sunny skies, and we're going to give that a 10 on the wasometer. That temperature is still trending just a little bit below where we should be for this time of year. So tonight we're going to have that clearing out process. Here comes that cooler air that moves into our area, and then uh, during the day tomorrow, mostly sunny skies, and we're going to be in this quiet and dry pattern as we go through the next few days. And cool mornings the next couple of days, but in the afternoons, those temperatures will rebound a little bit. So here's the seven day outlook, 43 degrees to start in the morning and then a high of about 65 degrees, 71 on Thursday with uh, mostly sunny skies, partly cloudy Friday and Saturday. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, 80 degrees we think on Sunday, but a 20% chance for a shower late, and then a 30% chance for showers Monday and Tuesday with high temperatures in the upper 70s as we start the work week next week. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. We'll talk to you later on in the broadcast. You know what, folks, we talk a lot about COVID-19 testing, but what does it actually look like? Well, you probably saw some of those images on social media, shocking, absolutely shocking images and video as well of nasal swabbing. But is that really true? A national verified team checks it out. Let's start with the posts. We're seeing this photo pop up a lot on Twitter, Facebook and more with claims that it shows a COVID-19 test. The captions mostly talk about how far back that swab has to go. It looks like it's going through about half the person's head. So is this real? Let's find out. Our sources here, the CDC, UC Davis Health, and a reverse image search. So finding the image was pretty straightforward. We ran it through a reverse image search, Google in this case, and it came up with multiple results. The oldest here on this University of California Davis Health site from March 17th. So this is a diagram of a nasopharyngeal swab test. Here's a CDC video showing. It. Collecting a nasopharyngeal swab clinical specimen. Swab specimens should be obtained from the posterior nasopharynx. Throat swabs and anterior nasal swabs have unacceptably low rates of recovery. And if you're like me, you shivered a bit while watching that. But the reality here is that nasopharyngeal swabs are a common testing method for viruses. And it is the test that has to be done right now to test for COVID-19. UC David Health adds that it's a six inch swab that's inserted into the cavity between the nose and mouth. They keep it there for about 15 seconds while rotating it and then repeat through the other nostril. So yeah, it's not pleasant to watch or get, but it does collect enough material to test for the virus. We can verify this photo is real and does show a nasopharyngeal swab test that is currently being used to test for COVID-19. 
Questions have been rolling in about that $2 trillion economic relief bill and if you qualify for a check from the government. So take a listen to this. As a reminder, people who earn less than $75,000 will get up to $1,200 from the government, 500 more per child. The amount goes down by $5 every $100 that you earn. People who earn more than $99,000 will not get a check. Married couples with no children who earn more than $198,000 also will not get a check. And today the IRS put out more information on the fastest way to get a check. If you filed taxes in 2018 or 19 with your bank information, the government will put the money right into your account. And we have a nifty tool for you, a calculator tool that can help you Figure out exactly how much money you qualify for. If you would like to get a link to that, text the word check to the number that you see on your screen. It's 404-885-7600. And once again, text the word check. Countless people have asked the question, can masks protect you from coronavirus? NBC News medical correspondent Dr. John Torres tells us if the recommendations are changing. That's coming up next. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Yeah, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got like the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish. Oh, Jess, please. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere <laughs> along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. okay, right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the rush block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the rush block on the morning rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. From the beginning, we made a commitment at 11 Alive to bring you facts, not fear, because information can actually help settle the fears that can feel like they're swirling around us. There's so much information to sort through. We're so glad to have NBC medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres joining us from my home in South Atlanta to his in New York City. John, I wanted to start off with what we're seeing all over social media, people sharing patterns for making their own masks. Do people need to be wearing them who should be sort through that information that's going around so much right now. 
Show, this is a great mask debate because you're getting some experts on one side saying, you know, they might help out a little bit, but you're getting the CDC and the World Health Organization both, co both coming out today saying, you know, they're not really going to help. People shouldn't be wearing them in the public. And one of the main reasons is because there's actually some studies showing that they could make things a little bit worse and make it more likely to catch the virus. Here's why. When people wear masks, if they don't wear them appropriately, if they're not putting them on over their nose and their mouth and not keep and keeping them dry, then the virus could actually get in there, especially if they get inside that six foot perimeter we usually talk about that social distancing and it gives people a false sense of security so they get closer to other people on top of that it's not protecting the eyes which is another way the virus can get in but some experts are saying hold on a second it might offer a little bit of protection and what a lot of people are saying is you know let's keep everybody says the surgical masks the n95 masks reserve those for the frontline workers they need those desperately because they're constantly in, in somebody's face who might have coronavirus. Mm -hmm. But for everybody else, you know, will these help a little bit? They might offer a little bit of protection, but you have to wear them appropriately. You have to wear them constantly. The best protection you can get, washing your hands, keeping that six, six foot dif distance. There's not much else you can do that's better than that. All right, a question we're getting a lot, I think you are as well. Once someone has COVID-19 and they recover, are they essentially immune, like if you had the chicken pox, or can you get that virus again? The bottom line is it doesn't seem to be because this virus really isn't mutating as it goes around the world, and we don't think it's going to mutate much going forward. Once you get the virus in your body, you build up antibodies, the virus goes away, those antibodies stick around, and they help protect you from getting it a second time. Problem is we don't know how long that protection is going to last. It might last a year, it might last longer. Main thing is going forward, especially if it comes back next year, we all need to keep our guard up and make sure we're doing the things we need to do to stay safe, especially while they're developing the medicines and the vaccines and everything else that are going to help us out in the long run. Still to come, a Metro Atlanta County says it will fine and even jail residents for violating stay at home curfews. Next, we walk you through the guidelines and how you can ensure you don't get fined. Hangers. You know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say you won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. 
where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is A somber day in Italy, the country and the Vatican observing a moment of silence and flew flags at half-mast. It was a tribute to the more than 12,000 Italians who lost their lives to COVID-19. Here in our state of Georgia, there are now more than 4,000 confirmed cases. 125 people have died in our state. And one county is making some drastic measures to make sure that those stay-at-home orders are actually followed. Matter of fact, violators in Gwinnett County could either be fined or possible, possibly end up in jail. 11 Alive's Christy Diaz has more on that. Gwinnett County is not playing around. The Solicitor General says anyone who violates this stay-at-home order could face 60 days in jail or a $1,000 fine. They're taking these strict measures because Gwinnett County is a hot spot in Georgia, ranking in the top five of counties with the most cases. The stay-in-place order went into effect over the weekend and covers all 16 cities in Gwinnett County. We have worked together to slow the spread of the virus. Now, I asked the county how they plan to enforce this. They said law enforcement is not the lead here. Code enforcement is. They'll be making sure non-essential businesses are complying and helping essential businesses with their social distancing. Police will mostly be patrolling the public spaces the county has already closed. Things like making sure people don't play on a roped off playground. Gwinnett County PD says their biggest focus is on educating the public and giving them the opportunity to comply. They'll handle other complaints as they come in. Now you're still allowed to go out for essential reasons. Think food, safety, medical, even working for an essential business. You're even allowed to go out and walk on a trail as long as you practice social distancing. But if you're out there for any other reason, you could face a misdemeanor charge. I'm Latasha Givens and I've spent part of the day talking to seniors who should be celebrating their last weeks of high school, but all the milestones and rites of passage now hang in the balance due to COVID-19. Brooklyn Gilliam. Graduation is really the main thing. Like, we're, we're going to be disappointed if we're not able to walk this stage. Mullen West. It's been very disappointing. Like, our prom was supposed to be last week, and we missed our prom. And Vashawn Ray are all Georgia high school seniors. And it's kind of hard not seeing the people that I've known probably since the seventh grade, eighth grade, not being, not seeing them for weeks at a time. It's kind of, it's kind of difficult. Instead of traveling for spring break and planning graduation parties, they're isolated. The mall being closed, movies, we can't go out to eat, can't go in groups to like certain areas. Gilliam, a senior at McEachern High School, has been accepted to seven state universities, but can only share excitement over the phone. It's very depressing because I'm, I'm alone most of the time. So it's like all we can do is talk over the phone and contact through social media. The students do not like Mullen the West, class valedictorian at Booker T. Washington High, may not be able to give his commencement speech. The football star has already been accepted to Howard University, but he says some of his classmates were hoping to use this spring sports season to determine where they would go. I have a lot of peers who are kind of like heartbroken because their seasons were ended early. A lot of a lot of kids like losing scholarship offers and recruitment, losing all of that. Vashawn Ray, also a senior at Booker T. Washington, was accepted to Dartmouth last Thursday. A dream come true. Now he's holding out hope of sporting a cap and gown and walking across the stage at his commencement ceremony. These teens have one message they want every Georgian to hear. Stay in the house. So it won't spread. Stay strong, uh, stay optimistic, wash your hands, stay home. So I would just tell people to keep their head up, um, stay home, because uh, we'll all get through this. Most districts have not officially canceled graduation ceremonies, and some of them are still hoping to fit prom in if students are allowed to return to school in enough time.
And we are wishing the best for those soon to be graduates as well. Even though it feels like life is centered around this one thing right now, there is some news that we just can't allow to be overshadowed, like the death of a man who spent his life advocating for the rights of others. Today, Joseph Lowry's daughter announced his funeral will be private with only close family members. Lowry worked side by side with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during the Civil Rights Movement. He was a founding member of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and its longest serving president. In 2009, he gave the benediction during the inauguration of President Barack Obama. Cheryl Lowry says although we cannot celebrate his life together, their family feels the support from the community. Again, our family and the Lowry Institute change agents are so grateful for your calls and your texts from the civil rights family, from people all across walks of life and the globe. The tweets, the posts have just been incredible. And from our Atlanta, a city that he loved and a people that loved him. Thank you. Lowry's family set a date for a public memorial on October 6th. It would have been his 99th birthday. His daughter says once we can all be together once again, we will be able to mourn his loss properly. Absolutely. All right. Thanks a lot, Natisha. You know, 11 Alive is committed, absolutely committed to verifying those viral claims out there and this one came into the newsroom one of you asked if asthma inhalers or nebulizers are safe to use during the covid 19 pandemic well our national verified team they dug into that question here's jason puckett with the answer the cdc does say that people with asthma may be at a higher risk of getting very sick from covid 19 and a number of you asked us whether asthma inhalers or nebulizers could make covid 19 symptoms worse or potentially spread the virus to answer, we went straight to the CDC and the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. Let's break this into two quick questions. One, will my steroid medication cause issues? No. According to the AAFA and CDC, corticosteroids are not a risk for people with asthma right now. They recommend you keep taking your prescribed medications, and that applies to pills, nasal sprays, and inhalers. Second question, can inhalers or nebulizers spread the virus? For a quick explanation, inhalers are those small devices that deliver meds through puffs you inhale. Nebulizers are larger and actually turn liquid medications into a mist you can inhale. The AAFA says inhalers are fine and should be used when possible, but they do say nebulizers could increase the risk of spreading the virus. That mist that's being created could carry the virus if someone sick was using it. Now that doesn't mean you can't use a nebulizer, especially if you need one because you're having an asthma attack. The AAFA just says to be cautious and consider limiting the number of people in the room. If you've got more questions for us to look into, send us an email. Well, how does love take shape in the age of coronavirus? One couple from coming didn't want to wait to get married and had a wedding they never expected. 11 Alive's Matt Pearl has their story. We have been told to isolate. We have been forced to postpone. Madeline Haston and John Orr had other plans. We just wanted to move on in our lives and get to live together. For years, they were next door neighbors, raising their own families. After both lost their spouses, John reached out for a companion and found new love. Loved being together and we have fun, we laugh and we're, we appreciate life and we're just thankful to be in love and at this age too. That's why at the end of last year, John proposed. It's why they set their wedding date for just three months later, March 29th, right as COVID-19 halted any large gatherings. We needed to go ahead and, and do something we felt like doing it. Wasn't it. We didn't need to wait any longer. You may kiss your new bride. Uh, so they did it. Right. On March 29th, Madeline and John had their wedding, and minutes later... They said, go out on the lawn, and here came the cars. Nine-year-old holding the sign out saying, congratulations, Grandmommy and John. And then here comes all our Sunday school friends in their cars. They couldn't gather together, so the crowd gathered as the new rules dictate. Feet apart, in their cars, honking horns. It just kept going and going, all this excitement. It was so fun. We just felt overwhelmed, really, didn't we? Sure did. We must isolate. We may need to postpone. Or we can follow Madeline, John, and their families and find a way to savor our days. We're just looking forward to the future. Hope we got a long time to go.
Still to come, the president claims the United States is doing more COVID-19 testing than anywhere else on the planet. Next, we're going to look at the numbers and how Georgia ranks among other U.S. states. The storms from earlier today have moved well off to the east. We are in that drying out process right now and cooling off process too. Stay with us. We'll show you some spots in North Georgia that will even make it down into the 30s by tomorrow morning. For more than 135 scouts, homeschooling is more than just reading and writing. It's a chance to now earn merit badges and help with some of those cooking around the house. Every week, Assistant Scoutmaster Mitch Leff, who lives in Decatur, hosts cooking lessons for his scouts on Facebook. The kids send in pictures of their final dishes, which leads to a question and answer session on anything from cooking hazards to best ways to cook outside. It's all part of a way for kids to earn a merit badge from home. The coronavirus makes it more challenging, but they're finding some creative ways to still connect. This idea is being picked up by different scouting organizations nationwide, putting all the time at home to good use. More classes are in the works on communications, family life, and even personal management. We'll be right back with more 11 Alive News Primetime. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jeff. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. About that. Well, reward would be. Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between. Welcome back, everyone. Here in Georgia, the coronavirus is still making a major impact. So far, there are now more than 4,000 confirmed cases, with nearly 600 in Fulton County alone. 
125 people have died in our state so far. The United States has uh, the most confirmed cases on the planet, more than 181,000. Italy has a little more than 105,000, and Spain is now ahead of China. We have done more tests by far than any country in the world, by far. President Trump is insisting the U.S. is doing more COVID-19 testing than anywhere else in the world. And yesterday, the White House announced that it already had about 900,000 COVID-19 testing done already. And according to NBC News, in a country of 327 million, just to put this into perspective, that's about one and 366 Americans. So today, we received the latest numbers on testing right here in our state of Georgia. And so far, there have been more than 16,000 tests administered. We compare that to other southern and mid-Atlantic states. According to covidtracking.com, North Carolina has administered a little more than 23,000 tests. Maryland, about the same number as Georgia, and Alabama, more than 6,600. Earlier today, Governor Brian Kemp announced a new initiative to ramp up Georgia labs to process up to 3,000 samples a day. We've been tracking those storms that came through late morning into early afternoon that moved through the city, gave us some rain. We picked up about a third of an inch of rain here in Atlanta. Folks uh, on the south side picked up a little bit more than that, and their winds were a lot stronger. They had more lightning, and that's where we had most of the damage on the south side of the city here. But everything is all gone now, but we're dealing with a northwesterly flow that is bringing in some cooler air. What is left of those storms is off of the coast of the Atlantic, and then still a few showers down into the Florida area. So finally, the moisture has moved out. The rain has moved out. Hopefully it helped to wash away some of that pollen out there today. Now these temperatures are falling. Take a look at the big picture. Let me show you what we're watching out there at this hour. And this is some of the damage that was left behind. This is sent to us from Susie Berta uh, in the Noonan area of the damage here uh, scattered in her area. We had a lot of reports down in Noonan. I've seen a lot of pictures from Coweta County. Here's another one. This is from Alicia French showing a tree down and uh, many areas with some damage and even power outages that are still taking place right now in the Noonan area. Here's a live look at Noonan. This is the courthouse there uh, in Coweta County there in downtown at noon and you can see the flags blowing a little bit as the wind is blowing not thunderstorm winds. These are just general winds coming in behind this system and that's also bringing in the colder air. Now earlier today we had that uh, marginal risk south of Atlanta, then a slight risk in middle Georgia, even an enhanced risk for parts of south Georgia. But now that those storms are gone, no storm risk for the rest of the night. So you can rest a little easier out there. You might just hear the wind blowing a little bit tonight and those temperatures are going to be falling. Today's high 64 degrees, but you know when that was? That was just after midnight and that was before the rain and the storms came in earlier today. Once the rain and storms came in, it started cooling down after that and right now we are down into the 50s, but those temperatures below average, we should be at 69 for this time of year. And here's that rain total, just a little bit over a third of an inch officially at Hartsfield Jackson and our rainfall surplus is at about a, uh, a foot over a little bit more than a foot above where we should be in rainfall for the year. Here's our forecast track for the night. Yeah, I had a lot of folks on social media tonight and on my Facebook Live talking about how chilly it is out there, a little on the breezy side. Watch these temperatures tonight. By tomorrow morning, many of you will be waking up to temperatures in the lower 40s. Even some spots in North Georgia like Dalton, Blairsville, Clayton, you're going to start off in the upper 30s. And those temperatures are below average. We should be around 47 for this time of year. So it's going to be starting off below average. And then we will move up into uh, the 60s here in the afternoon. I'm going higher than this model. I'm going really closer to the mid 60s for a high, but we're going to have plenty of sunshine around. It is going to be just a little bit breezy out there. So here's a look at the weather headlines. Cooler. We're feeling that right now. It'll be cool in the morning and then in the afternoon tomorrow, generally the mid 60s. And we have a dry pattern as we're finishing up the week and even going into the weekend, it's looking dry. We'll, we'll introduce about a 20% chance for a shower late on Sunday, and it's also going to be 
a warmer weekend. We're back to the 70s, even some 80s as we head into the end of the weekend. 65 for high tomorrow, going with a 10 on the wasometer. Mostly sunny skies, going to be looking pretty nice out there. Forecast track, not showing a lot. We've got any of that lingering moisture over to the east getting out of here. Northwesterly flow cools us off, and that sets the stage for those clearing skies to continue tonight. And plenty of sunshine during the day tomorrow. We get up to 71 on Thursday. Then Friday, partly cloudy skies, a little warmer at 76. Saturday, near 80. Sunday, I think we'll hit 80 with a few more clouds and just a 20% chance for a shower late in the day. 30% chance for showers, though, Monday and Tuesday with high temperatures in the upper 70s. Welcome back to the show, folks. I'm Francesca Emmerker, and I'm at home practicing social distancing, and it is time for the A scene. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been telling you how celebrities have really been dealing with this pandemic and what they've been doing to help out. So let's start with Atlanta rapper Future. Guess what he's doing? Well, believe it or not, According to his Free Wishes Foundation, he's created a campaign called Mask On, and with the help of 500 volunteers in the company Atlanta Sewing Style, they will make and deliver masks to hospital workers and patients in need. They're also looking for people to donate, so if you can, head on over to the Instagram page, Free Wishes Foundation to do your part. And this weekend, everyone was watching season three of Netflix's Ozark, which was filmed right here in Georgia. This season, the pressure is on for Marty and the Bird family, mostly for Marty though. This season seems to focus on the Bird family's ability to keep up with their promises to shareholders as they swirl deeper into the drug cartel's world. 10 episodes of juicy goodness, ready for you to stream on Netflix right now. And my final story for you, I couldn't show you the video because it was too nasty, but season two of Dr. Pimple Popper is back and they want you. They're looking for ATLians who may have a little issue. This is the season two on TLC. Okay, so specifically, Dr. Lee is ready to help people with things like rashes or large growths. If this is you, send your email and your contact information, a photo of you, your condition, and a short description of how it affects you. Then head on over to 11 live.com slash the AC to submit. We already have the submit and the actual actual article on our website right now. So head on over there and let's see if we can get an ATL in on the screen. Well, there is a lot of information to sort through right now. So here are three other stories today that you may have missed. Walmart will begin checking the temperatures of its employees in the US. They will also have to answer basic health screening questions before coming to work. Any associate who comes to work with a temperature of at least 100 degrees will have to go home. Walmart says those employees will still be paid. Our thoughts in, are with the people of New York. The virus is hitting the NYPD there pretty hard. According to the commissioner, approximately 5,500 officers, which is 15% of the force, has called out sick, and the number just continues to rise. Some are getting to the other side of COVID-19. 17 officers who tested positive have recovered and are now back on the job. And the U.S. Department of Transportation is allowing airlines to consolidate competing flight flight routes so Delta and the American passengers could end up sharing a plane. This comes after weeks of airlines flying near empty planes. According to NBC News, flights to some airports will now be combined in an effort to lower the number of planes in the air and also cut costs. My hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. 
There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays. We're going to see cooler air starting tomorrow morning, right around 43 in the morning to start. Then we get up to 65 in the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine around. It's going to be a nice day, but just a little cooler than average. Back to 71 Thursday after a cool morning. 76 Friday with a couple more clouds. Partly cloudy Saturday and 78. 80 on Sunday, but the rain chance goes up to only 20% later in the day. Then a 30% chance for showers Monday and Tuesday with highs still in the upper 70s. All right, looks good, Chris. Well, we will all see you back here at 11 at our sister station on 11 Alive for Uplate. Ron, Chris, and I. Take care, everyone. Our Where Atlanta Speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. didn't wait the next week. Ah. You're all, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. 
it didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Now at 10, we have several new developments to pass along on the coronavirus pandemic. First, the government's top doctor is now saying that social distancing guidelines appear, appear to be working for now, but they say that still more needs to be done. And the number of deaths from coronavirus in the United States has now climbed to more than 3,700 people. That now exceeds the number of people who died in the September 11th terrorist attacks. And it's more than the official count in China where the outbreak first started. To give you some perspective on that, China has 1.3 billion people. The U.S. has 327 million. Georgia's public health commissioner warned we would start to see sharp increases in the number of cases as the state processes more tests. As of 7 o'clock tonight, there are more than 4,100 confirmed cases in Georgia. 125 people, sadly, in Georgia have died from the viruses. And we are all watching these numbers very closely right now, not only here in Georgia, but also around the country. That's right, Jeff. Uh, today, the White House Coronavirus Task Force says as many as 240,000 people could die from COVID-19 nationwide. That is under strict social distancing guidelines. And without it, that total could be even higher. There's no magic bullet. There's no magic vaccine or therapy. It's just behaviors. Each of our behaviors translating into something that changes the course of this viral pandemic over the next 30 days. That was the message from one of the nation's top health officials. Restrictions can work and are working to lessen infections and deaths. John Sherrick begins our team coverage tonight. Who is getting the message? People using Atlanta's Beltline and parks, which remain open, are still not 100% staying at least six feet apart. Atlanta's mayor and Georgia's governor deciding for now not to impose the tighter stay-at-home types of restrictions, including closing parks, that many local governments such as Cobb County and Gwinnett County have imposed. Across the country, nearly three in four Americans are under stay-at-home orders or advisories. Dr. Anthony Fauci of the White House Coronavirus Task Force says the best ways to lower the current projections of up to 200,000 deaths in the coming weeks include people staying apart and staying at home. You're starting to see that the daily increases are not in that steep incline. Kinza Health, which makes internet-connected thermometers, tracks fever hot zones, a key symptom of COVID-19, and in bright red, New York and Florida. But data from the past seven days show up here, in deep blue, showing the areas with the biggest decreases in fever rates. Kinza CEO, Inder Singh. The data is showing that it's effective in every part of the country where we've seen social distancing actions implemented, shelter in place, um, stay at home. So now the president's task force urging everyone to practice social distancing and stay at home for 30 more days. Tonight, some city council members say Atlanta's stay at home order isn't strict enough. They're asking Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms to shut down the Beltline and parks. The city would have to limit the access to these parks and trails it would send a definite message to the community that this is a serious pandemic. Mayor Bottom said her experts have told her shutting down parks and the Beltline would be ineffective at this point, but Bottoms didn't rule out making adjustments to the city's emergency policies. She thinks the stay-at-home order could extend beyond its current April 6th expiration date. A 30-year veteran of the Army left the Pentagon a few years ago ready for a new civilian life and a new fresh start. And she struggled for years with PTSD and depression, anxiety, as well as multiple injuries as a result of her service. She shared a story with Hope Ford. 
in the hopes of helping anyone facing difficult times or isolation for the next month. That last deployment to Afghanistan brought back just so many different things and I just couldn't cope. Tanya Oxendine moved to Atlanta around 2017, a move that escalated her depression into self-isolation. She describes it as slowly being pulled under by quicksand. Months had gone by, even years, that I was just that depressed because of the isolation and the loneliness. Well, isolation is a real thing for those that we serve on a daily basis. Uh, and now that the majority of the country is facing that as well. Dana Dreckman is the director of Wounded Warrior Project Talk, a program Oxendine says helped her. Wounded Warrior Project Talk is an emotional support line helping warriors through weekly phone calls. We have warriors that are, you know, maybe going through some emotional stress because they're looking for a job or maybe they've just now been laid off from a position. It's hard to compare what veterans go through and their mental health struggles to the millions of people who are isolating for the first time. But Dreckman says the things they help veterans with can be applied to anyone right now. Things like finding the positive, no matter how small, and getting outside. Dreckman adds social distancing is only physical, so find a virtual support system. Oxendine credits Wounded Warrior Project Talk, her sons and physicians, as her fresh breath of air. Reach out, ask for help. It's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. Happening tomorrow, Governor Brian Kemp will tell us how he's ramping up the state's testing. The state is partnering with the University System of Georgia, Georgia Public Health Laboratory, and Emory University to increase the ability to run COVID-19 tests. The goal is for labs to process more than 3,000 samples each day. Many of you are watching the number of cases reported from hospitals. Some of you are asking, why don't they match the official state list of confirmed cases, at least right now anyway? Well, you're right. The information flow can be slow as things around us are happening so quickly. The governor said last week the state is sometimes operating off of old information. The data that we're seeing today is two weeks old. Uh, the data that we're going to see two weeks from now is going to be what really happened today. So think of it this way. The process for reporting cases is like a relay handing off information. Individual hospitals and medical practices report to counties. The counties collect all that information and report it to the state. Then the state releases those numbers to the public. We don't know for sure how long it takes for that information to make it all the way through the relay, but from, hosp from hospitals to you, but we know it is not instant and can even take weeks. Governor Kemp says we hope the surge capacity plan will allow federal and state public health officials to gain a more complete picture of COVID-19's impact on Georgia and better inform our collective decisions going forward. As the demand for masks and protective equipment grows for medical professionals all around the state and all around the country, there are some high school kids who are stepping in and helping out. Ryan Kruger shows us how an after-school hobby has turned into life-saving equipment. You're looking at a 3D printer. In about an hour, it'll look like this. We found a solution that allows us to put a protective shield uh, made of plastic in front of the entire face. Meet Kyle, Stephen, Megan, and Colin, high school students who are the brains behind 3D PPE, a new company they created last Friday. They use each person's unique skills to create protective shields that they donate to medical professionals. They've already donated a few hundred, with hundreds more coming. We don't really know if and when this is going to end, so it's kind of just we print them as long as there's a need. The designs came from online, and in just a couple of days, they've raised enough money to get more 3D printers. Everyone, it seems, is willing to lend a helping hand. I think it's honestly bringing the community together a lot. Um, for instance, I've never met any of the people on this call. Really? You don't know anybody. You don't know anybody involved in this. I don't. The doctors are out there fighting for us. In a sense, you, you gotta kind of help them out. And the students have created a GoFundMe to try to subsidize all of this. You can find that information by looking for the story on 11alive.com. We have you covered. It sounds like a great idea. It sounds like it is going to make an impact as well. Well, the Dow and... I'll take it from here. The Dow and the S&P 500 sell their worst first quarter in history. Both indexes are down at least 20% since the start of this year. Coronavirus fears sent the markets tumbling. 
The questions as well have not stopped coming in about the $2 trillion economic relief bill and if you qualify for a check from the government. So take a listen to this. As a reminder, people who earn less than $75,000 a year will get up to $1,200 from the government. 500 more per child. The amount goes down by $5 every $100 earned. People who earn more than $99,000 will not get a check. Married couples with no children who earn more than $198,000 also will not get a check. And today the IRS put out more information on the fastest way to get those checks. If you filed taxes in 2018 or 19 with your bank information, the government will put the money right into your account. We have a calculator tool to help figure out exactly how much money you qualify for. If you want to get a link to that, text the word CHECK to the number right there on your screen. It's 404-885-7600. Again, don't call, but text the word CHECK. The storms that rolled through here earlier today are now out of here. Now that's just opening the door to a northwest flow. And if you've been out tonight, you've been feeling that cooler air around. Stay with us. We'll show you which areas of North Georgia can even wake up to temperatures in the 30s by morning. A story of survival after the break. We hear from a nurse practitioner who nearly lost his life to COVID-19. Today, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, Good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, I've got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chester. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush, weekdays, five to seven AM. Only on eleven alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time. An Atlanta nurse practitioner is in recovery after almost losing his life to COVID-19. He does not know how he contracted it, but he spent 10 days in the ICU fighting for his life. It was an arduous battle. Reveal investigator Andy Parati recently talked about his harrowing experience. When he took this picture, Quan James thought it could be his last. Man, I was so scared. Like, I literally thought I wasn't gonna make it. I was freaking out. Like. I would never forget it, ever. It started about three weeks ago when the 29-year-old nurse practitioner and avid flag football player thought he had a cold. I was um, having chills, shaking, had a fever. I was sweating. Um, I wasn't coughing yet. It wasn't until I went to the hospital when the coughing started. He admitted himself into the Emory St. Joseph campus near Dunwoody, where he worked in its ER for nearly five years. At first, staff diagnosed him with pneumonia, but a test later confirmed it was COVID-19. Short time later, he couldn't breathe on his own. And then on top of that, um, the virus caused me to have an enlarged heart, so my heart was working very, very hard for what was going on. So that was another reason why they um, intubated me. The scariest moment happened when his breathing tube clogged, cutting off his oxygen. At that moment in time, 
I thought I was gonna not make it because it took the nurses a while to get in there. When I think of you, I think of like Iron Man. You can tell that you're super health conscious. You're very aware of your body. This must have been really frustrating knowing how much you take care of your body for this to happen. It was because before this, I hadn't even had a cold in eight years. And so for this to happen, it was very shocking. After nearly 10 days in the ICU, James is now home. He posted this picture on Facebook to warn other young people who don't think they're at risk that this could happen to them. As someone as healthy as I was, I was literally on my deathbed. And I'm trying to tell people that you need to take care of yourself, you need to take this serious. James isn't sure how he contracted the virus. He specializes in addiction and mental health recovery. So he doesn't work in a traditional hospital setting. James hopes his story is a wake up call for those who don't think they can contract the virus. I'm Andy Parai. Wow, what a frightening story. My goodness, I'm glad he is, he is pulled through and he is okay now. Uh, strong storms pushing through parts of Georgia this afternoon. No matter where you were in the metropolitan area, you probably got a bite of some of this wind and some of the rain that came through our area. But that's not the only thing that you are going to feel as far as the difference goes. Our chief meteorologist, Chris Holcomb, is here about what we can expect over the course of the next few hours. And I was going to say, you know, into morning rush hour, but, <laughs> you know, that is in our past for now. Yeah, I think there's no such thing as a morning rush anymore. But we do have some morning cold air coming in, and we're already feeling it out there right now. As we had those storms that rolled through this morning, we did have many, numerous reports of damage, especially uh, on the south side. Uh, a majority of those damage reports came from around the Coweta County and Noonan area. Those storms moved out. They're well off to the east right now. Even off the coast, as you can see that all moving out through the Atlantic. So the state is now drying out. No additional rain moving through right now. It's just the really cold air that's left back behind. So let's take a look at this on the bigger picture. You know our pollen count today, 29-22, and it's mainly from oak, pine, mulberry, sweet gum, and sycamore trees. The grasses are in the moderate range, the weeds are low, and the mold is also in the moderate range. This number is uh, a lot lower than what we had yesterday. And in fact, we hope this trend will continue of seeing an even lower number tomorrow, all right? So let me show you what we were dealing with on Saturday, almost 7,000. Sunday, the second highest pollen count on record here in Atlanta. And then on Monday, it was down a little bit to 713. Now, today's pollen count came in before the rain came. So we're hoping that tomorrow's count after the rain and with cooler air in place, we're hoping that tomorrow's count is going to be a little bit even lower than this. So we're hoping we did get some relief. A lot of times these are really hard to predict because the wind whipping up could stir up more pollen. Uh, so we'll wait and see tomorrow morning when that comes out. But look at these temperatures. We've been cooling down pretty quickly today. In fact, our high temperature today was in the overnight hours before those storms came in this morning. And then after the storms rolled through, temperatures fell. Right now we're at 50. We have 48 though in Carrollton, 40s in Marietta, Canton, Gainesville, Blairsville, also in Clayton. 50s though to the south and east of us. Watch these temperatures as we go through the nighttime hours. In the morning, we start off here in Atlanta in the lower 40s. We'll have a lot of low 40s all around. That is actually below average. We should be around 47 for an average low for this time of year. So yeah, it's gonna be cooler. We're even gonna see some 30s in Dalton, Blairsville, and into Clayton. So a chilly start for you early in the morning. And then we move up to about 65 in the afternoon. We are gonna have a lot of sunshine during the day, a little breezy at times. We're gonna go with the 10 on the wisometer with that sunshine. It's just gonna look really nice out there, even though it is gonna be on the cool side. There's that northwesterly flow coming in. That's what's bringing in not only the cooler air, but also the drier air. We're seeing the dew points dropping and that's gonna to help to give us that dry weather uh, during the day tomorrow with plenty of sunshine around. No big weather features moving in, not only for Wednesday, but also Thursday. 
very quiet out there. The only thing you see moving is the clock there on the screen and those winds may be changing just a little bit. Once we get toward the end of the week and the weekend, we'll see partly cloudy skies, just a few more clouds mixing in. But those temperatures are going to start uh, moving up a little bit. 71 Thursday, 76 on Friday, 78 on Saturday. On Sunday, we hit 80 degrees, but we'll see a 20% chance for a shower coming in late Sunday. I really think most of us will stay dry for the second half of the weekend. Then Monday and Tuesday, rain chances back up to about 30% and our temperatures in the upper 70s to start off next week. It's time for your weather wow moment of the day. Heavy rain and winds cause down trees throughout Metro Atlanta. Susie Berta sent us this photo from Noonan. You can see tree limbs all over her yard, but fortunately there was no damage to her home. However, she does say part of her fence, trailer and shed were damaged. We want to see all of your weather wow moments. The easiest way to share them is on the 11 Alive Storm Trackers Facebook group. All you have to do is request to join the group and you can do that anytime. Right now is a good moment. We talk a lot about COVID-19 testing and there are a lot of ways that you can do it. Uh, there was a startling image of a nasal swab on Facebook today. You probably saw that. It was eye opening. I, I, I know I was showing it around my own home and we were all going, yeah. But is that true? Is that the way it really works? We wanted to verify and our verify team takes a look at whether it's true or not. Let's start with the posts. We're seeing this photo pop up a lot on Twitter, Facebook and more with claims that it shows a COVID-19 test. The captions mostly talk about how far back that swab has to go. It looks like it's going through about half the person's head. So is this real? Let's find out. Our sources here, the CDC, UC Davis Health, and a reverse image search. So finding the image was pretty straightforward. We ran it through a reverse image search, Google in this case, and it came up with multiple results. The oldest here on this University of California Davis Health site from March 17th. So this is a diagram of a nasopharyngeal swab test. Here's a CDC video showing. Collecting a nasopharyngeal swab clinical specimen. Swab specimens should be obtained from the posterior nasopharynx. Throat swabs and anterior nasal swabs have unacceptably low rates of recovery. And if you're like me, you shivered a bit while watching that. But the reality here is that nasopharyngeal swabs are a common testing method for viruses. And it is the test that has to be done right now to test for COVID-19. UC David Health adds that it's a six inch swab that's inserted into the cavity between the nose and mouth. They keep it there for about 15 seconds while rotating it and then repeat through the other nostril. So yeah, it's not pleasant to watch or get, but it does collect enough material to test for the virus. We can verify this photo is real and does show a nasopharyngeal swab test that is currently being used to test for COVID-19. After the break, how a community is celebrating healthcare workers who are fighting to save lives during the coronavirus pandemic. Your beautiful skin, you know, when it's all hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Blog on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Lil' Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibes. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. 
there are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hence. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised news. How do you say thank you to the men and women risking their lives to fight coronavirus on the front lines? It is hard to show our appreciation for healthcare workers when we have to stay away. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross shows us a movement to create an outpouring of support. America's heroes aren't wearing capes, they're in scrubs. Thank you, thank you for all you're doing. It's nearly impossible to convey our gratitude. So we honk, holler, and pray. We are outside of the hospital right now, and we're praying over the hospital along with many, many people from Noonan. We make signs and tie white ribbons around trees. There are donations, too. <laughs> Supplies and food. Anything to bring a smile to our heroes in the midst of this crisis. And we just can't say thank you enough. Well, that does it for me. I'm going to get ready for up late. Yeah. I'll be on the sister station at 11 o'clock. All right, Natisha, thank you. We appreciate it. We will look for you on 11 Alive in about 30 minutes. Here's what's coming up next on the Big 36 on this Tuesday night. Still to come, a metro Atlanta county says it will fine even jail residents for violating stay-at-home curfews. Next, we walk you through the guidelines and make sure that you don't get fined. Live. Atlanta. Almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. 
where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say in the flow. No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming. It was a somber day in Italy. The country and the Vatican observed a moment of silence and flew flags at half mast. It was a tribute to the more than 12,000 Italians who have lost their lives during the pandemic. Here in Georgia, there are now more than 4,000 confirmed cases. 125 people have died statewide. We have done more tests by far than any country in the world, by far. President Trump insisting the U.S. is doing more COVID-19 testing than anywhere else in the world. Yesterday, the White House announced that almost 900,000 tests had been administered around the country. And according to NBC News, in a country of 327 million, that is about one in every 366 people. Today, we received the very latest numbers on testing here in Georgia. And so far, there have been more than 16,000 tests administered. We compared that to the other southern and mid-Atlantic states. According to covidtracking.com, North Carolina has administered just over 23,000 tests. Maryland, about the same number as Georgia and Alabama, more than 6,600. Earlier today, Governor Kemp announced a new initiative to ramp up Georgia labs to process up to 3,000 samples a day. And our country is taking drastic measures in an effort to try and keep this pandemic at bay. Violators in Gwinnett County could face a hefty fine. They could even be in jail if they do not do as they are told. Here's Christy Etheridge Diaz. Gwinnett County is not playing around. The Solicitor General says anyone who violates this stay at home order could face 60 days in jail or a thousand dollar fine. They're taking these strict measures because Gwinnett County is a hot spot in Georgia, ranking in the top five of counties with the most cases. The stay in place order went into effect over the weekend and covers all 16 cities in Gwinnett County. We have worked together to slow the spread of the virus. Now I asked the county how they plan to enforce this. They said law enforcement is not the lead here. Code enforcement is. They'll be making sure non-essential businesses are complying and helping essential businesses with their social distancing. Police will mostly be patrolling the public spaces the county has already closed. Things like making sure people don't play on a roped off playground. Gwinnett County PD says their biggest focus is on educating the public and giving them the opportunity to comply. They'll handle other complaints as they come in. Now you're still allowed to go out for essential reasons. Think food, safety, medical, even working for an essential business. You're even allowed to go out and walk on a trail as long as you practice social distancing. But if you're out there for any other reason, you could face a misdemeanor charge. The pandemic has also left thousands of Georgians unemployed, and we are sorry and sad to report that that's one of the most popular stories on 11alive.com, trying to figure out how to file for unemployment to make sure you know what you're doing so you get your money as quickly and as painlessly as you possibly can. But now many people say that the process is taking too long. 11 Alive Chenu Her took uh, those concerns to the Georgia Department of Labor. Many Georgians looking for answers about the filing process. The Georgia Department of Labor says it processed about 12,000 unemployment claims as of last week. Before this pandemic, the DOL processed only about 5,000 per week. By next week, the DOL says those numbers could be astronomical. 
Department of Labor is trying to keep things efficient, running smooth. 11 Alive's financial expert Andrew Pulo says the department is doing the best it can to handle all of the claims. And with each individual claim filed, it could take at least two weeks to process. Well, just be patient. They're working very hard, obviously, trying to make things happen for everyone. But just like anyone else, we're all overloaded right now, mm -hmm. trying to uh, help everyone. So. The DOL tells 11 Alive it's working every day to improve the system. If possible, it recommends people have their employers file a claim on their behalf if they're only out of work temporarily. Those claims can be automated. And they've asked all employers to file on behalf of their employees. Uh, you got to get a little bit of time. They're working uh, around the clock to make it work, but we're starting to see unemployment claims being paid. The best resource right now for people with questions is the Department of Labor website with specific pages set up for those affected by COVID-19. The DOL says on an average week, the site gets about 55,000 visitors. Last week, it got more than 100,000 hits in one day. Wow, those numbers are unbelievable. Here at 11 Alive, we are, we are committed to making sure that all the information that you get is factual, that these viral claims, and we see a lot of them on social media, are indeed factual. So we've seen this one floating around. Uh, one of you has passed it along that if asthma inhalers or nebulizers are safe to use during the pandemic. So we had our Verify team dig into it, and here is Jason Puckett. The CDC does say that people with asthma may be at a higher risk of getting very sick from COVID-19. And a number of you asked us whether asthma inhalers or nebulizers could make COVID-19 symptoms worse or potentially spread the virus. To answer, we went straight to the CDC and the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. Let's break this into two quick questions. One, will my steroid medication cause issues? No, according to the AAFA and CDC, corticosteroids are not a risk for people with asthma right now. They recommend you keep taking your prescribed medications, and that applies to pills, nasal sprays, and inhalers. Second question, can inhalers or nebulizers spread the virus? For a quick explanation, inhalers are those small devices that deliver meds through puffs you inhale. Nebulizers are larger and actually turn liquid medications into a mist you can inhale. The AAFA says inhalers are fine and should be used when possible, but they do say nebulizers could increase the risk of spreading the virus. That mist that's being created could carry the virus if someone sick was using it. Now that doesn't mean you can't use a nebulizer, especially if you need one because you're having an asthma attack. The AAFA just says to be cautious and consider limiting the number of people in the room. If you've got more questions for us to look into, send us an email. Today, the Reverend Joseph E. Lowry's daughter announced plans for his funeral. It is going to be private with only members of the immediate family in attendance. Reverend Lowry, of course, worked for decades for, for such a, uh, a long period of time in the SELC. He was such a shepherd. His impact on American life was great. In fact, it is so difficult to imagine Atlanta without Reverend Lowry. For those of us who were lucky enough to know him over the years and, and certainly to interact with him, we all have stories. We all have fond uh, remembrances of him, and we also know about what he meant to our country and to social justice. A remarkable life and such an important man. In 2009, he gave the benediction during the inauguration of President Obama. And Cheryl Lowry says, although we cannot celebrate his life together, their family feels a lot of support coming from the community. Again, our family and the Lowry Institute change agents are so grateful for your calls and your texts from the civil rights family, from people all across walks of life and the globe. The tweets, the posts have just been incredible. And from our Atlanta, a city that he loved and a people that loved him, thank you. He moved here in 1968, first began working here in 1961. But America is such a different and a better place because of the life that Reverend Lowry lived. His family has set a date for a public memorial on October 6th. It would have been his 99th birthday. His daughter says, once we can all be together again, there will be a great opportunity to, to mourn his loss properly in this community. Well, love doesn't take a break, even during a global pandemic. Up next, how one couple made the most of their wedding dreams. We started the day tracking storms late morning into the early afternoon. Now we're tracking the cooler air moving our way. Stay with us. We'll let you know if those storms mixed with the cooler air can maybe drop that pollen count a little bit. And coming up, Kirby Smart and the dog still working 
during this time, but it is a little different. It's a little different from a lot of us, isn't it? You'll hear from the head coach coming up next in our sports segment. That is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say in the No, 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 You could have super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Blog on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. This is a story of Atlanta college students inspiring a huge collaboration in a time of a crisis, of a pandemic. And they thought that they were learning the skills they hoped would change the world someday. And they found that day had come a lot quickly than they had anticipated. Cheryl Preheim has their story. The need is now and growing by the day. They were quick to jump on board and to help. It compelled a team inside a lab with both Georgia Tech and Emory students to help. We need all hands on deck in this crisis. Cuts four shields at once. They designed and started rapid production of face shields for medical workers. The goal is to meet the needs locally and to, uh, to actually supply the Department of Public Health Georgia and when they have enough to supply the federal uh, Department of Public Health uh, stockpile. 10 to 20 times what we what we usually have. Carrie Love is Emory Healthcare's Director of Infection Prevention and a nurse, and she was the go-between taking the design from the lab to the front line. Make a few suggestions, get it back to them, 
they made those edits. The students that were involved in this project actually did a great job to address those needs for the clinicians immediately. It had to be just right, but it had to be done fast. When a physician comes to you and says every hour that we don't have these, someone is at risk of dying, it really uh, compels you to move faster and, and move faster than you thought you could. They've now made their first deliveries to Emory Hospital. This is a really unprecedented time. A lot of people are able to come together and collaborate in a way that doesn't happen in the normal climate. The next generation of scientists helping lead the way, compelling others to join them. How does love take a shape and a form in this era of coronavirus? One couple from coming didn't want to wait to get married, so they had a wedding that they never really expected. Here's Matt Pearl with their story. We have been told to isolate. We have been forced to postpone. Madeline Haston and John Orr had other plans. We just wanted to move on in our lives and get to live together. For years, they were next door neighbors, raising their own families. After both lost their spouses, John reached out for a companion and found new love. Loved being together and we have fun, we laugh and we're, we appreciate life and we're just thankful to be in love and at this age too. That's why at the end of last year, John proposed. It's why they set their wedding date for just three months later, March 29th, right as COVID-19 halted any large gatherings. We needed to go ahead and, and do something we felt like doing it. We didn't, we didn't need to wait any longer. You want to kiss your new bride? Oh. So they did it. Right. On March 29th, Madeline and John had their wedding, and minutes later... They said, go out on the lawn, and here came the cars. Nine-year-old holding the sign out saying, congratulations, Grandmommy and John. And then here comes all our Sunday school friends in their cars. They couldn't gather together, so the crowd gathered as the new rules dictate. Feet apart, in their cars, honking horns. It just kept going and going, all this excitement. It was so fun. We just felt overwhelmed, really, didn't we? Sure did. We must isolate. We may need to postpone. Or we can follow Madeline, John, and their families and find a way to savor our days. We're just looking forward to the future. I hope we got a long time to go. Oh, what a great story there. So many celebrations are being handled differently nowadays. And today we're celebrating the rain that has moved out. We're hopefully celebrating a lower pollen count tomorrow as that rain hopefully washed away some of that from earlier today. And now we're bringing in some cooler air that's moving our way tonight. Those storms have pushed down to the south and the east. Now the state is dry and we're all cooling down as well. But as those storms came in, we did see some damage, especially down into Coweta County. That's the area where we're seeing most of the damage reports. Now it was scattered from Coweta County to Fayette County, over into Henry County, also Rockdale County and Newton County. Those are the areas that saw most of the damage today. But here's a look. This is from Susie Berta in the Noonan area, showing some damage there. Alicia French from Noonan also. This picture with the tree down. We have numerous pictures of the trees down in those areas. Here's a live look in Noonan at this hour. No storm damage right now in the downtown area. Look at the flags blowing right now. That's not because of any thunderstorms or anything. That's just because of the winds after this system, the northwest flow that's coming in here, and that's what's ushering in the cooler air. In fact, we're not going to see any additional strong storms earlier. The Storm Prediction Center had that area south of Atlanta in the marginal risk, then a slight risk from LaGrange over toward Macon, and then we even had an enhanced risk, a level three of five risk down into South Georgia today. But now the storms are gone. No additional storm risks out there for tonight, so should be some good sleeping weather for you out there tonight. It is going to be cooling down. That's after we got up to 64 degrees. That was really during the overnight hours, and then temperatures were in the low 60s this morning. Then the rain and the storms came in, and then the temperatures have been falling. We've been in the 50s pretty much throughout most of the afternoon and into this evening. Average high for this time of year is 69, so we were below average today. We're going to be below average in the morning as well. We picked up about a third of an inch of rain today. We still have a surplus of more than a foot 
above where we should be in rainfall. Here's a look at those temperatures. We were at about 64 degrees. That was at the one o'clock one a excuse me, one a.m. hour. Then we've been holding in those lower 60s overnight. The rain and storms came late morning into afternoon and then boom, those temperatures fell into the 50s. We held in the 50s for much of the afternoon hours and tomorrow it's going to be a chilly start. Lower 40s in most areas in the metro Atlanta area, but then outside the city, we're even going to have some 30s around. We get up into the lower 60s from this model. I think we'll be a little bit higher than that with all the sunshine. I do think we'll get up generally into the mid 60s here. So with your weather headlines, the cooler air is in place. It'll be with us in the mornings the next couple of days within the afternoons. It rebounds pretty nicely. We also have a dry pattern right now and a dry weekend and a warmer weekend coming in. And I say a dry weekend. Uh, we will see partly cloudy skies from Friday into Saturday. And then on Sunday, rain chances only at 20% late in the day. Rain chances I really think will hold off until Monday and Tuesday when they go up to 30, maybe even 40% with highs in the upper 70s. Well, spring football is underway, sort of. It's not the spring football that we are accustomed to. Uh, Kirby Smart is having to stay quarantined like so many others, but he's still allowed to interact with his team over the internet for a couple of hours a day. And our Alex Glaze tells us what Kirby has been up to with this team. Quarantine life has been an adjustment for everyone. For Kirby Smart, it hasn't been all bad. Probably been better for my my real health than anything because I've had more time to do things like get out and go exercise. He's also able to do a lot of work from home. Their daily Zoom meetings with staff, and he says it's exactly what the staff would be doing if they were in spring ball. But they're not in spring ball. So just like UGA students are doing with their classes, spring ball is also being done virtually. The biggest thing with no spring practice would be just knowledge. It's really more how much can they digest virtually? We're trying to act like we're going through spring practice right now and we're doing it with our players virtually, but with two hours a week, it makes that a little bit tougher. But not all of Kirby Smart's time has been spent on football. When he self-quarantined after returning from an international trip, he spent time with family, exercised, and watched one of the most watched shows everyone seems to be watching right now. Tiger King. I got through two episodes. I just couldn't do it, man. I couldn't stomach it. And everybody continues to talk about it, but I, my patience wears thin. I'm looking for a little more plot, I'm for a little more, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but that's not my cup of tea, I'll just say that. I'm more of an Ozark guy. And the question everyone wants to know the answer to, will football season start on time? I don't want to give an opinion on that because I'm not, I don't want to be speculative and guess. Tiger King, I, I, I kind of like that thing. It's, uh, it's hard to turn away from. <laughs> it's like watching a wreck in NASCAR, right? You, you can't turn away from it. New Orleans kicker Will Lutz is from these here parts. Of course, he was a fine kicker at Georgia State and now one of the absolute best in the National Football League. And while he should be concentrating, trying to get himself set and ready to go for summer camp and beyond, that is not the case. Maria Martin says how all of this is now hitting home with the pandemic. Do you have a favorite quarantine snack right now? Uh, pita chips and hummus. So maybe healthy snacks are behind the success for former Georgia State Panther Will Lutz. And Lutz splits it. But right now, dealing with the coronavirus impacting football isn't the only thing Will is having to worry about. Oh, the NBA got hit with it, and I think that was the big eye-opener for us. That it was kind of like, oh, wow, this is real. It's not... It's not the flu. Watching Saints head coach Sean Payton announce that he tested positive for the coronavirus and that athletes in multiple leagues had it, he quickly realized how serious the virus is. And that was definitely an eye opener. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is how hard it's hitting Louisiana as a whole. Because of COVID-19, he and his fiance Megan have had to postpone their wedding. Let's well, be completely honest, we didn't have a choice, right? That was scheduled to happen on April 11th. I think the biggest thing for us was we still want to have our dream wedding. At the end of the day, I think we both deserve, you know, that special moment of being able to celebrate with our friends and family. So once we kind of heard that we couldn't have more than, you know, 10 people, we were like, hey, we're still getting married, but let's, you know, let's postpone the party. And for a guy whose schedule is pretty packed in the fall, they're having to get creative on that pending new date. We're hoping to, to have a bi-week wedding. Um, but the challenges that come with that is we don't even know our bye week yet. Are you nervous that football is really going to be affected? Hopefully we don't have to delay the start of the season or lose a game or two. Um, 
but to sit here and say that I'm not a little concerned would be lying. All right. Thank you, Maria. That is it for sports. We will take a break. Back right after this. I uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun, you know. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together we come alive, amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they would ah. wait the next week, you're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across we're going to watch those temperatures uh, start off kind of chilly in the morning at 43 degrees. We'll even have some 30s up in far north Georgia. We get up to 65 in the afternoon with mostly sunny skies. A little warmer Thursday after a chilly start. We get up to 71, 76 Friday, 78 Saturday with a few more clouds mixing in. Rain chance on Sunday is going to be at 20%. And then we go up to a 30% chance for showers Monday and Tuesday with high temperatures near 80 for Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. All right, Chris, thank you. I hear my dog barking in the background there during the commercial break. That must mean it's almost 11 o'clock and time to switch over to 11 Alive for Up Late. For the team, I'm Jeff Hollinger. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, <laughs> on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go oh, to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. Yeah. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. 
You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 So I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood, it's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy. From 11 Alive News, Up Late starts now. In just one hour, the coronavirus pandemic is entering a brand new month right here in Georgia. And as you know, folks, it has totally uprooted all of our lives. And tonight, a strong warning from the nation's top doctors as they talk.